In a village with abundant water and food, a large number of birds migrated here every year. By the pond next to the village, an old man was sitting leisurely fishing, while admiring the beauty of the birds foraging by the pond. It was 1987. The old man's name was Adam. He was over 70 years old, but he was still in good spirits. His children were all working outside the home, so he lived alone. To pass the time, Adam went to the pond to fish every day. Even though he couldn't catch a fish every time, he was content. That story took place in such a beautiful place, and was about this old man, who went fishing in his spare time. One day in 1987, Adam picked up the fishing rod and bucket, and walked leisurely towards the pond. Adam sat on the shore, skillfully throwing his rod, and waited silently. But after a while, he didn't catch any fish either, so he threw the rod again. At this time, he suddenly saw a black shadow in the air falling toward the ground. He looked closely and saw that it was a black bird. Seeing this, Adam didn't care about cleaning up the fishing rod and walked quickly towards the place where the bird fell. After a while Adam walked to the place and saw a vulture lying in a puddle. It was for this reason that the vulture did not die outright. Adam looked at the vulture. The vulture was still alive and strong and let out a cry. Adam wanted to save the vulture, but the vulture was floating on the water and the water in the puddle was so cloudy that he couldn't see how deep it was, so he felt very difficult. Adam hesitated, and the vulture was still chirping with its head up, but it sounded weak. Seeing this, Adam no longer hesitated and walked slowly into the puddle. Adam walked cautiously and approached the wounded vulture. Fortunately, the puddle was not deep, and Adam quickly walked to the vulture. He didn't have time to check the vulture's injuries, so he carried it and walked towards the shore. Arriving on shore, Adam checked the vulture's injuries. Adam still knew a little bit about animals because he used to be a veterinarian and often treated animals in the village. Adam was taken aback when he saw it. The vulture fell from the air into the water. Its legs were slightly bent and there was a wound on its wing. In general, it was difficult to survive this situation. But Adam upheld the fear of living beings. He was unwilling to give up this vulture. Adam returned home with the injured vulture, who was unconscious and motionless. Adam carefully placed the vulture on the table, then took tweezers from his home to remove the feathers from the vulture's wing wound and wiped the wound. Adam then took out some herbs and applied it to the vulture's wings, then examined the vulture's bent claws. Luckily, it didn't matter. Adam knew he had done his best, but it was up to the vulture itself. Adam had been by the side of this vulture, checking its condition at all times. Soon the night passed and the vulture woke up. After waking up, the vulture wanted to fly away immediately. It flapped its wings, but the wound on the wing had not healed, and it could not fly at all. Adam was awakened by the sound of the vulture flapping its wings. Looking at this awake vulture, he knew it would not die. As long as it healed its wounds, it could fly, so he was relieved. Adam grabbed the vulture and checked the wound on the vulture's wing, which was much better than last night, so he put the vulture on the ground. Adam then went into the kitchen and he took out some raw meat, and fed it to the vulture. The vulture stared vigilantly at Adam, but Adam didn't care. He turned and left the house, took the rod and went to the pond to fish. The vulture sniffed the piece of meat Adam threw to it and ate it, which it quickly finished. When Adam came back, he was relieved to see that the piece of meat had been eaten. The next day Adam checked the vulture's injuries. It was getting better, so Adam fed the vulture some food. Then he locked the vulture at home and went out fishing. Adam checked the vulture's recovery every day for the next few days, 
and fed the vulture food before going out to fish. Until that day, the vulture had gradually recovered, and new feathers had grown from its wound. The care of those days allowed the vulture to gradually accept Adam, and when Adam checked its injuries, it no longer resisted, but was very obedient. After another two months, the feathers of this vulture had grown, and the wounds on the wings had recovered. Adam checked the condition of the vulture again that day, and when he saw the vulture that had recovered, he wanted to release the vulture. Then Adam took the vulture to the pond and wanted to release it. He didn't expect the vulture to be unwilling to leave. Adam drove the vulture hard, but the vulture was hiding, just not willing to fly away. Adam looked at this vulture so rogue, he smiled helplessly and said to it, its injury has healed. Hurry up and don't follow him. The vulture still refused to leave. Adam couldn't do anything about it, so he just let it go and got on the rod and started fishing. Adam sat quietly by the lake fishing, regardless of the vulture standing behind him. Suddenly Adam's fishing rod swayed, and Adam lifted the rod sharply. Adam was very happy when he caught a fish. The fish was not big and Adam put it in the bucket. At that time, a gleam of light flashed in the eyes of the vulture and quickly took the small fish in the bucket and ate it. This stunned Adam, and after reacting, he said angrily that the vulture was a white-eyed wolf and ate his fish. The vulture was stunned, looking at the angry Adam, it lowered its head like a child who did something wrong. Adam smiled at the vulture like this, and he didn't say anything else, but continued to fish. Seeing that Adam didn't speak anymore, the vulture suddenly raised its head, spread its wings and flew out. Adam was a little surprised, looking at this vulture, which had not been flying in the sky for more than two months, flying clumsily, looking a little rusty, Adam looked at the vulture's funny look and laughed again. As the vulture flew away, only a black spot remained in Adam's eye. Adam didn't look at the vulture that flew away, but continued to fish quietly. Adam fished for a while, but he didn't catch any fish. Adam felt a little pity at the thought of the little fish that was eaten by the vulture. Just as Adam was about to pack up and go home, the vulture suddenly flew back with a fish in its mouth. It put the fish in Adam's bucket. Adam watched this astonishing scene and forgot to pack his things. Then he looked at the vulture. He approached and touched the vulture's feathers, and then packed up. When he finished packing, he found that the vulture had not left. So Adam drove the vulture again, the vulture took off again, watching Adam from the air. Adam waved at the vulture, turned away, and the vulture flew into the distance. Adam came home and took out the fish that the vulture had delivered and feasted. He thought that the vulture actually knew how to repay, which made him a little curious. After that, Adam still often went to the pond to fish. Although he couldn't catch it many times, he still went. After the vulture flew away, Adam never saw it again, the vulture seemed to have disappeared. Though Adam would think of the vulture, and its comical air show every now and then, he would also remember every scene of taking care of that vulture, but he knew it would be difficult for him to meet the vulture again. One day a year later, Adam went fishing at the pond as usual. Adam was fishing very intently, but he still had no catch. As it got late, Adam packed up. At that time, a dark shadow suddenly appeared in the distant sky and flew towards Adam. But Adam didn't notice it, but was still packing his things, and the shadow quickly flew to Adam's side. Adam looked at the dark shadow that suddenly fell beside him. It was the vulture that Adam had saved. This vulture had a fish in its mouth. Knowing that Adam saw it, it lowered its head and put the fish in its mouth into Adam's bucket. Adam looked at the vulture with a smile on his face as he stroked the vulture. By then the vulture had grown so large that Adam couldn't hold it. Adam waved at the vulture, trying to tell it that he had the fish so it could go. The vulture did not leave immediately after taking off. 
but kept watching Adam in the air. Adam didn't think much, turned and walked towards the house. However, the vulture kept flying behind Adam. Adam looked helpless at the vulture following him, but there was nothing he could do, so the vulture followed Adam home. After that, Adam still went fishing every day. But the difference was that there was always a fish in Adam's bucket. It turned out that the vulture caught it and put it in Adam's bucket. This vulture stayed by Adam's side all the time and refused to leave and lived with Adam. This vulture accompanied Adam and repaid him with its company. It made Adam no longer feel lonely but happy. Adam and this vulture lived in harmony. Sometimes things are so wonderful in the world that people and animals can live in harmony. Humans should treat all things in the world peacefully and deal with other people and things peacefully. Only by making the earth more beautiful and the world more harmonious can people and animals create a better home. This is today's story. Click to subscribe for more interesting stories.